Hello, my name is Michaela Crowley. I'm a organic chemistry student for summer 2017 at UIS and today I'm going to be showing you how to determine your molecular formula and structure through use of an IR spectrum. So using the mass spec as shown here, we're going to identify our molecular weight, which is going to be found right here. So it's important to note that we are always going to read our mass spec from right to left. So we're going to read from this way to this way, which is not normal for us, which is also why we found our molecular weight all the way over here on our right side, and it's not necessarily the tallest. Now that we know our molecular weight, we are able to determine our molecular formula of the structure. So we're gonna start by taking our molecular weight and dividing it by 12 to tell us how many possible carbons we could have. So when we do that, we get six. Then from there, we're gonna say six times 12 because 12 is the carbon number and six times 12 is 72. Well, that only leaves us with 74 minus 72, which would leave us with two hydrogens, which we know can't be correct because we have to have some sort of halogen or alkyl halide in our molecular formula. So we're gonna start over again. So we re-ran. This time we decided that we were only going to have four carbons and four times 12 would give us 48. Then we took our 74, which is our molecular weight, minus our 48 for our carbons to give us 26. From there, I knew that I needed some sort of oxygen because it was an even number. So I took 26 minus the 16 that would give me for oxygen and I was left with 10 hydrogen. Once again, my molecular formula is not quite correct, so I'm going to run again. This time we decided that we were going to have three carbons. So once again, I did my 74 divided by 12 to give me my total that I could have six carbons. Then from there, I took three times 12, which is my total carbons that I can have to get 36. Took 74 minus 36, was left over with 38. Took 38 minus 32 because I decided that this time I was going to have two oxygens and 16 and 16 is 32 to give me six hydrogens. Based upon our final calculations, we discovered that our molecular formula is C3H6O2. Now, from here, we're able to determine our degrees of unsaturation. So next, we're going to calculate our degrees of unsaturation. So in order to do this, you're going to take 2 times the number of carbons you have. So in my case, I have 3 plus 2 plus the number of nitrogens you have, and I have zero, so I'm gonna add that to zero. Then I'm going to subtract the number of halogens I have, which in my case is oxygen and two, and then I'm going to subtract again the number of nitrogens I have, which is six. From there, I'm going to divide this entire equation by two. This is going to give me a total degrees of unsaturation. This is going to give me a total degrees of unsaturation of zero. We're also able to draw our molecular formula, which I like to draw mine such as this. So I'll go ahead and draw it here. So we're gonna have a hydrogen, it's going to be bonded to a carbon. It's going to be bonded to an oxygen. It's going to be bonded to a CH2. Which is also going to be bonded to a CH3. Our carbon here is going to be double bonded to an oxygen to account for all the bonds that are needed. So we can go ahead and count everything up and make sure we have it. So we have two hydrogens here and three hydrogens here, which gives us five, and then a hydrogen here, which will give us six total hydrogens. 
then we're going to need three carbons. So we have one carbon here, one carbon here, and one carbon here. Gives us three carbons and two oxygen. So here's one oxygen here and one oxygen here. You can also see up at the top right hand of your screen the molecular formula in a 3D structure. That has appeared on every slide. Next, we're going to be looking at our IR, and it's important to note that when you're looking at your IR, you don't want to look at your fingerprint regions. So you're going to be looking between your so you're going to be looking between your regions of 3,000, which is going to go through here, and 1,500, which is and 1,500, which is going to go right through there. So we're going to look at everything in between here. And this time, we're going to be reading from left to right. So we're going to be looking at our five regional peaks on here. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to go ahead and identify those peaks using an infrared mass spec spectra um, diagram that we were given, and I'll go ahead and include that on here as well. So we're going to be using our analytical chemistry infrared spectrometry diagram over here to interpret our peaks over here. I know it's a little bit hard to see in the video, so you'll just have to trust me. So remembering that we're going to read from left to right, I have over here on the right hand of the screen labeled my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth peaks. So my first four peaks were pretty easy to identify. They're all alkanes. They all happened before the 2000, I'm sorry, they all happened after the 2000 and before the 3000, and before the 3000 mark. My last one, however, I believe is an aldehyde and keto ketone based on not only how low it is in the spectrum, but also that it falls before the 1500 mark, but after the 2000 mark. To explain a little bit further, what you've been seeing on the right hand side of all of the screens is a 3D structure of ethyl formate. So I thought that I would go ahead and put it on my last on my last slide just to conclude that the mass spec and infrared spec that I were given led me to believe that my mo molecule in question was ethyl formate C3H6O2.